Have you ever lost something or someone that you loved? A pet, a grandparent, or even a friend? Well, hi there, Reader Adventurer, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we are reading a story about a sad but important topic, loss. At some point in everyone's life, they lose someone they love. And although this is part of being human, it doesn't make it easy. And today's story, The Little Matchstick Girl, shows us that we can find love, even in the saddest of times. Let's get started. The Little Matchstick Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. It was terribly cold and nearly dark on the last evening of the old year, and the snow was falling fast. In the cold and darkness, a poor little girl with bare head and naked feet roamed through the streets. It is true she had on a pair of slippers when she left her home, but they were not of much use. They were very large, so large indeed, for they had belonged to her mother, and the poor little girl had lost them in running across the street to avoid two carriages that were rolling at a terrible rate. <gasps> one of the slippers she could not find, and a boy seized the other one and ran away with it, saying he could use it as a cradle when he had children of his own. Hmm. So the little girl went on with her little naked feet, which were quite red and blue with the cold. In an old apron, she carried a number of matches and had a bundle of them in her hands. No one had bought anything of her the whole day, nor had anyone given her even a penny. Shivering with cold and hunger, she crept along, looking like the picture of misery. The snowflakes fell onto her hair, which hung in curls on her shoulders, but she regarded them not. Lights were shining from every window, and there was a savory smell of roast goose, for it was New Year's Eve. Yes, she remembered that. In a corner between two houses, one of which projected beyond the other, she sank down and huddled herself together. She had drawn her little feet under her, but could not keep off the cold. And she dared not go home, for she had sold no matches. Her father would certainly beat her. Besides, it was almost as cold at home as it was here, for they had only a roof to cover them. Her little hands were almost frozen with cold. Ah, perhaps burning a match might be some good. Hm. If she could draw it from the bundle and strike it against the wall, just to warm her fingers. She drew one out. Scratch! How it sputtered as it burnt. It gave a warm, bright light, like a candle, as she held her hand over it. It was really a wonderful light. It seemed as though she was sitting by a large iron stove. How the fire burned and seemed so beautifully warm that the child stretched out her little feet as if to warm them when, lo, the flame went out. The stove vanished and she had only the remains of the half burnt match in her hand. She rubbed another match on the wall. It burst into a flame, and where it fell upon the wall, it became as transparent as a veil, and she could see into the room. The table was covered with a snowy white tablecloth, on which stood a splendid dinner service, and a steaming roast goose, <laughs> stuffed with apples and dried plums. And what was still more wonderful, the goose jumped down from the dish and waddled over towards her with knife and fork. <laughs> then the match went out 
and there remained nothing but the cold damp around her. She lighted another match, and then she found herself sitting under a beautiful Christmas tree. It was larger and more beautifully decorated than the one she had seen through the window of the rich merchant's house. Thousands of tapers were burning upon the green branches and colored pictures like those she had seen in the shop windows looked down upon it all. The little one stretched out her hands toward them and the match went out. The Christmas lights rose higher and higher until they looked to her like stars. Then she saw a star fall, leaving behind it a bright streak of fire. <gasps> Someone is dying, thought the little girl, for her old grandmother, the only one who'd ever truly loved her and who was now in heaven, had told her that when a star falls, a soul is going up to God. She again rubbed a match on the wall and the light shone around her. In the brightness stood her old grandmother, clear and shining, yet mild and friendly in her appearance. Grandmother, cried the little one, oh, take me with you. I know you will go away when the match burns out. You will vanish just like the warm stove and the roast goose and the Christmas tree. And she made haste to light the whole bundle of matches, for she wished to keep her grandmother there. And the matches glowed with a light that was brighter than the noonday. And her grandmother had never appeared so large or so beautiful. She took the little girl in her arms, and they both flew upwards in brightness and joy, far above the earth where there was neither cold, nor hunger, nor pain, for they were now with God. In the dawn of the morning, there lay the poor little one, with pale cheeks and smiling mouth, leaning against the wall. She had been frozen on the last evening of the year, and the New Year's sun rose and shone upon the little child, the child still sat, holding the matches in her hand, one bundle of which was burnt. She tried to warm herself, said some, but no one imagined what beautiful things she had seen, nor into what glory she had entered with her grandmother on New Year's Day. What a sad, sweet story. I am glad that the little matchstick girl is in heaven with her grandmother. Sometimes when I feel sad, I like to draw or pet my dog or talk to a friend. What about you? What do you like to do when you're feeling sad? I hope you enjoyed our story today and I'll see you on the next one. Until then, happy story time. Bye.